Well, hello again, everyone, and welcome to, well, what I'm calling another G-Scale review. You can call it whatever you want. But today, I'm going to be looking at this Lionel Thomas & Friends Ready to Play train set. And I'm going to be honest here. This is honestly a set I never thought I'd get my hands on, uh, much less even show on this channel, just because I didn't really, we'll say I wasn't really impressed with this when I saw it. But considering I actually found one of these at what I thought was a reasonable price, I decided to go ahead and snatch it up, and I figured go ahead and take a look at it on this channel. And I've got some other plans for this set, but I'll get into that later on. Anyways, let's go ahead and get it out of the box here and see what we got. Now, I should mention that I did open the box uh, when I got this just to see how everything was inside, so... This isn't the first time I've had stuff out here, but the box out of the way. And it is nice to uh, see how everything is laid out in the box. Got uh, some paperwork I just spilled on the floor, but I pick all that up. But yeah, I mean, I do like how everything's laid in there. You take a look at it there you can see you got the locomotive the two passenger cars there's some track here the remote faces and underneath which is something to be uh, aware of if you do get this set there is more track right here and see even this is still sealed so it leads me to believe this set was basically never used go ahead and get the plastic off here set that aside and I think we can take Thomas out here first. And it doesn't look too bad. A uh, bit of a lightweight, but then again, I think this train is mostly made of plastic. Uh, go ahead and get Annie out of the package here. I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. Uh, <laughs> I, I guess I really shouldn't jump to conclusions till I've uh, got everything out and looked everything over. There's the additional faces and like I said they're still in the sealed uh, plastic bag uh, controller here a vast amount of track I believe all these are curves and last thing is the track under here and this looks like all the straights and a couple curves and these appear to be packaged in pretty well I don't think I'm going to show me taking these out well, everything's out of the box, and you can see we've got quite a bit of track, although these two stacks are the curves, and the short stack here is the straight, so I uh, would have liked to have seen more of that personally. But also, uh, there's uh, some of the paperwork and everything else. You know what's here. I don't need to explain it all. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at this stuff now. Now, looking at the models, and I'm not exactly sure if you could call these models or not, but I've got Thomas here, and I'll be honest, I do like the overall look of this, and despite not having a lot of detail, it has enough detail there to make it look appealing. Because one thing I really like is the fact that this has metal buffers, because if they were plastic and this model went through some rough play, I guarantee these would be the first thing to go. So the fact that they're made out of metal is definitely a plus. But there's also a coupler detail there, and a headlamp, although it's not functional. I am a little disappointed there was some sloppy painting going on here, but uh, I do like the face despite what some people have said. I don't think it looks as bad as they make it out to be. Going on to the side here, I do like the relief on the lining. Uh, may not be realistic, but it does add a nice touch. It's also around the cab windows as well. Uh, the number one is just a decal. It's uh, There's no relief to that. Same can be said for the cab windows at the front. And originally I thought the whistles were actually brass, but it turns out they are plastic, just painted gold. A uh, bit deceitful, but in a good way because it's actually more convincing. But going around to the back of the model, uh, I do like the coal load here. It's nice to see that it's not the bunker isn't overfilled. Uh, I like the fact that they have it like this instead of being piled to the roof. I am a little disappointed there are no rear cab windows. There is a tail lamp here, but it's non-functional, and the coupler 
between the buffers is missing for whatever reason. But going underneath the model here, you can see that we have traction tires on the outer wheel sets and the middle wheels are left flangeless, probably to negotiate tighter curves. And the side rods on the model are plastic. Uh, curious to know how durable those would be. But yeah, overall, I don't think Thomas looks too bad. Now, Annie and Clarabelle aren't as detailed as Thomas, but I still think they look good regardless because I'll just bring in Clarabelle here, but you can see again, we got the metal buffers. There is no coupler detail. Uh, I do notice some sloppy painting going on here again, but we do have the names crisply applied to the sides of the coaches. There is uh, door details and such, and we do have axle box and leaf spring details. There is no detail on the bottom of these coaches, but that's to be expected with a set like this. And we do have the relief on the back as well. And something I really like with these coaches is that Lionel gave them removable roofs. And that's a good play feature with these because it allows kids to put figurines, other characters, and toys and such in these coaches to be passengers. So it's nice that Lionel uh, gave these coaches that option to have removable roofs. And one more thing I do like is that they went with the classic faces. Now I have nothing against the newer CGI faces, although it's more so to do with the fact that the CGI faces pretty much look the same on Annie and Clarabelle. Uh, so I like the fact that they went with the classic faces even though Thomas is CGI himself. Now there isn't a lot I can say about the track, although I do like the way that it joins. Uh, seems like a positive connection, although I'm curious how long this would actually last. Seems pretty flexible, and considering that this set is made for younger children, it probably is made to a standard. Now I wanted to do a comparison of the Lionel Thomas next to the Bachman one here. And right away you can see there is a size difference because the Lionel one is a fair bit smaller. But not only that, there is a cost difference and both these trains are built to a price. Because the Lionel Thomas was made to be more affordable for the younger large scale modelers getting into the hobby. Whereas the Bachman model was made to be more detailed and look more appealing for the serious large scale collectors. But not only that, with the Bachman model, you literally have $400 worth of train here and that doesn't even include a power supply or track to run the train on. Whereas Lionel Thomas, for a fraction of that cost, you could have an entire train set. Before I start putting this set together, I just wanna talk about something that is kind of irritating with the Lionel ready to play system because there's actually people and retailers out there who market these ready-to-play sets as being G-scale, when in reality they are not, not only in terms of size, but also in regards to track compatibility. Now over here, I have a Lionel G-scale Polar Express, and this is the original one, not the re-release. This one has the black wheels, whereas the re-release had the gray wheels. But I purchased this set several years ago because I wanted a train for Christmas and this was the only G-Scale Polar Express on the market. But what I liked the most about this is that I could run it on the track that came with it or I could run it on actual G-Scale track. However, years later, Lionel re-released this set and they changed the gauge width. And then they not only did it to that, but they also did it to all the other ready-to-play sets that they brought onto the market. And in my opinion, that was a bad move. Now, as you can see here, this Lionel Polar Express locomotive fits on G-scale track without any issues. Now, if I bring in the ready-to-play Thomas, no matter what I do, this model will not work on this track because again, the gauge width is wider. Not only did the gauge width change, but the track itself changed. Because here is what the old straight track looked like. Here's the new straight track. Also, here is the old curved track. Here 
is the new curve track. And another something you can see is that the length has changed. For some reason, Lionel has made the new pieces shorter. Why? But not only did the length of the track change, the way it connects also changed as well. So it's no longer compatible there either, which it wouldn't really matter because again, the gauge width is wider. But you honestly gotta ask, what moron at Lionel is making these decisions? And I know not everyone's going to feel the same way about this, but in my opinion, I honestly think Lionel shot themselves in the foot by changing the gauge width of these sets. Because I think it limits the number of people that would potentially go out and buy them. But looking at this from the standpoint of a serious G-scale collector who maybe has their own layout or outdoor railroad, say they've got kids that they want to get into the hobby, but they don't want them running their higher-end trains until they got some experience behind the controls. That's when they go out and buy one of these starter sets. And the negative with the raid play system today is the gauge width being wider, whereas the sets that from yesteryear had the advantage of either running on the track that came in the set, or if it was available, they could run on a more elaborate G-scale railroad. The rated play line today has its own designated track system. So if you want something more elaborate than just an oval that comes in this set, you gotta go to Lionel and buy more of this ready to play track. And I think that is honestly ridiculous. And Lionel knew exactly what they were doing when they changed the gauge width. They wanted this not to be compatible with anything else. They wanted you to have to go and buy more track. And in the end, this is their way of making more money off the ready to play system. Now I do know a few people who have gone out and bought some of these newer ready to play sets only to find out that they're not G scale compatible. But in defense of Lionel, nowhere on these ready to play sets are the words G scale present. And again, I think people who are marketing these sets as G-Scale need to reevaluate their decision because that is actually false advertising. You know, these may have been G-Scale compatible at one time, but that was then, this is now. And apparently Lionel doesn't understand the saying, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So anyways, with that little rant out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and move off the workbench here and start putting this set together. So we moved out of the workshop and we're currently in my room at the moment, but I went ahead and built the set for Thomas here. And I also put together the set for the Polar Express. And if I just turn around here, you can see I also laid out some track for the Bachman Thomas as well. But next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and get some batteries into the Lionel model here. And we'll get this up and running and also run some other trains as well. Now Thomas himself requires six C-cell batteries. They get put into this, uh, well, cradle, I guess you'd call it. And this gets put into the back of the model here and then go ahead and reinstall the battery cover. Now the remote requires three AAA batteries and I'm not exactly sure what the reasoning is for this because the Polar Express remote has two AA's. Whether or not this gives you more runtime, I don't know. But I think for both the remote and Thomas, I'd recommend some rechargeable batteries. Okay, with all the batteries installed, we can go ahead and turn the unit on. And the on switch is actually Thomas's dome right here. So go ahead and give that a turn. An indicator LED will come on at the back and he'll start making the beeping sound, meaning he's searching for a signal. And all you do is turn the remote on. Indicator LED comes on on that and then Thomas will start making idling steam train sounds. Now if we push this button here, we'll hear Thomas's bell even though he doesn't have one. And if we push this button here, we'll hear Thomas's whistle. And this button here, which is probably my most favorite feature about this, Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the throttle up here and Thomas should start moving.
Well, I'm not sure if you can hear me over all the noise, but I got the other trains running along with the Lionel Thomas here. And just coming around this way, I got the Polar Express. And over on this side, the Blockman Thomas running around on its circuit of track. And I gotta say, I am impressed with this Lionel Thomas set, despite some of the negatives it has. I think, in a way, this does have its advantages. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm having a lot of fun right now, but I think it's time to put the trains away, go back down to the workshop, and give my final thoughts on this Lionel Thomas set. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this set. And to begin with, I really do like the trains, and despite being mostly made of plastic, I don't think it takes away from the overall look. And there's enough detail on these to be convincing, but at the same time, there's not fragile details on them that are going to break off during rough play. Another thing is I really like the sound system on Thomas. I like the whistle. I like the different phrases he says. The bell seems a little bit odd in my opinion, but then again, I think that's a feature that the kids will like. And something I do want to mention is that there have been some people that have been very critical over this LED on the back of the model here. They say this is a misplaced tail lamp but honestly i think all this is is just an indicator led to show when power is applied if lionel was actually going to put a working light on this model i think they would have been smart and put it on the front but another thing i do like is the interchangeable faces and this is probably my favorite out of the three of them included just because of how funny it looks but the other two are also nice as well and it looks like we're keeping up with the cgi era and last thing is the remote now this has a really positive feel to it and i especially like the signal strength that this has because i can literally be about maybe 50 feet if not more away from thomas and i still get signal with this remote and i didn't even have close to that kind of luck with the polar express when i got that uh, you could probably get maybe about 10 feet away before you started losing signal, and I actually ended up installing a new antenna to try to get more range out of that. But, yeah, those are definitely the pros with this set. Now, as a standalone set, I really do like this, but again, my biggest pet peeve has to be the track system. Why did it have to change? What was wrong with the old design, and why couldn't this system have remained compatible with G-Scale? Another issue I found is that when running the train, Thomas and the coaches ran rough on this track. And I know it wasn't the models themselves because I tried running them on just a flat surface and I didn't have any issues. Somewhere, this track is inferior. Another thing I'm disappointed with is the faces. And yes, I know I just got done praising these, but my problem is more so to do with the lack of expression because all these faces seem to be the same cartoony cheesy grin rather than you know happy sad surprised all that like Lionel used to do previously but at the end of the day I think this was a decision that was more Mattel driven than anything else the last issue I have with this set has to do with the cost because Lionel's RRP for this is basically $100. Now, if you look around online, some retailers are charging more, some are charging less. But on average, you're going to pay around $80 to a little under $100 for one of these. And I find that to be a ridiculous price compared to other Lionel ready-to-play sets. Because they have a Santa Fe set, a Pennsylvania set, a Hogwarts Express set, a John Deere set, the Polar Express set, a Frozen set various Christmas sets 
and these hover around the 50 to 70 dollar range sometimes you can pick them up for less if you find a good bargain but when you take that price into consideration and compare it to the thomas set it really makes no sense because all the ready to play sets are the same they come with the same amount of track the same number of trains and they all have the same sound features and when you take those other ready to play sets and compare them to the thomas set the thomas set seems way overpriced for what it is when there's other ready to play sets on the market which are far better value for money and the final question is would i recommend this set and to be honest with you all i can't give a definite answer on that now don't get me wrong i really do like this set i think it has its advantages and I think it'd make a great starter set to get younger modelers into the hobby. But at the end of the day, it's the parents that are going to be the ones purchasing these sets. And I think when they compare the Thomas set to other Lionel ready to play sets on the market and then look at value for money, that's going to be the deal breaker. But in addition to that, if parents do get their kids into the ready to play system, they pretty much got to stay in that system because they can't expand outside of it. And if you're a serious G-Scale collector that wants to get your hands on one of these, forget it. This is definitely not a set for you. The only reason I got one of these is, one, because Curiosity killed the cat, and two, because I found it at a really good price, $50 on eBay. And I do have a project planned for Thomas and the coaches, and I'll be sure to do a video on that when I get around to it. But I think I'm going to leave the review here, and I want the audience to decide whether or not this set is worth getting, whether or not it's value for money, and whether or not Lionel actually you know, delivered something good. And please don't make any comparisons of this next to Blockman because both of those sets are on different playing fields. But anyways, that's it for now. Let me know your thoughts down below and thanks for watching.